What's happening guys, I'm TechSource, welcome to Setup Wars episode 164 where you submit your desk setup to get featured on the channel. You guys know what to do, if you want to participate, make sure to watch the video link down below. But with that said, let the Setup Wars begin. I want to give a huge thanks to Clean My Mac for sponsoring this episode of Setup Wars. Finally, we have a multifunction hub and a cleaner app that does what it says. Other cleaner apps make it a chore to wipe and protect your files, but on top of doing these tasks efficiently, Clean My Mac will help speed up your computer. It has a simple and intuitive interface, and the standout feature I really like is the drop down menu. At a glance, it lets you see how much space is available on your computer, as well as other important processes like CPU load and memory use, which shortcut to the app itself. Once installed, it's very straightforward. The tab on the left showcases all the main features. Smart Scan is an automated detection pulling up results from all the other suites. This includes cleaning, protection, and suggested speed improvements. These reports all have individual diagnostic reports which can be manually viewed so there's no accidental deletion or unwanted processes. It does a great job of breaking down the report for you. Now I run this task every once in a while just as a preliminary measure and to free up space. It's also a quick and safe way to resolve any errors brought upon broken items. Now the other suite of tools like malware removal, privacy, optimization, and maintenance all have the same scan which in the end tells you what processes to terminate. This can be really helpful in speeding up your Mac's performance without running obtrusive fishy tasks in the background. The applications and files suite can also come in handy. Say for instance you want to delete files unrecoverably or remove applications and extensions safely. Additionally, Clean My Mac can reset apps bringing them to their initial state and keep user created files intact. There's even a search bar at the top right to help you navigate the app. As the name suggests, it's a beautifully clean and powerful utility that will make your Mac as good as new. If you're interested, links will be in the description below for you guys to check out Clean My Mac and download a free trial. My editor uses this for both of his Macs and it does the trick every time. <laughs> Okay, is it me or did Adrian just walk into someone's home? I don't know if he lives here or what, but it's pretty badass having an entire place just for gaming and editing. So we have a triple monitor setup with a 29 inch ultra wide up top and all of that is mounted on the Beckhand desk. For peripherals, he's using the Razer Black Widow Chroma keyboard, the Mamba Elite mouse and even a pair of Astro A50s. He does have a mic setup as well, the Rode NT-USB microphone that is hooked up to a boom arm and it probably sounds really good since half the room is covered in acoustic panels. I love the addition of the wall shelves. He has one on the left for his PS4 and the other for his PC, which has an interesting spec list. An 8700K with the stock cooler and a GTX 1070. I mean, come on, at least spend $15 more and get a better cooler than that. That 8700K is probably starving for cold air. It's also not overclocked, which is a lot of wasted performance. For cable management, he routed all the cables from the PS4 and the PC straight towards the back of the monitors using cable sleeves and a Signum rack. I noticed he uses a lot of LED strips. Not only does the setup have it, but the side with the refrigerator has one and even the ceiling. I can't help but get a feeling that this place is very similar to an insane asylum with RGB lighting. It's kind of creepy to be honest, but it's still a badass gaming setup. Thank you Adrian for starting up the show and I'll drop a link to his YouTube channel if you guys want to check him out. This next setup from Alex is kind of entertaining. It's built for gaming, editing, and schoolwork, and it features three 1080p monitors from HP, which he ended up painting to match the color scheme. The desks are also custom made, and he painted the surface on both of them, but the most interesting thing about the setup is the wall-mounted PC. That does not look safe at all, and if one of the parts were to fall down, it's gonna take the rest of the system with it. 
He's using a Moto Speed CL108 keyboard with a Roar gaming mouse and he has a set of PlayStation controllers under each of the monitors. He did drill a hole in his desk for the wires which run underneath his desk and behind the backboard. I feel like the PC is mounted in a weird location and it should be closer to the actual setup. Maybe on the right side of the wall, but other than that, it doesn't look bad for a 16 year old setup. I'm really digging the custom work on the monitors and that desk. Thank you Alex for entering. Andre is up next with a Razer inspired triple monitor setup rocking three 27 inch Philips monitors that are mounted on the wall. I mean, just look at those thin bezels. Wow. Sticking with Razer gear, we got the Deathstalker Chroma keyboard, an Ouroboros mouse which has been skinned in white, and we also got the Goliathus Extended Chroma gaming mouse. The headphones are also from Razer, he's using the Kraken 7.1 Chromas, however the speakers are from Microlab. You know, you could have just picked up the Leviathan from Razer and called it a day. Cables are neatly managed underneath the desk and routed in the back of the PC through a cable sleeve. Unfortunately, the PC is sitting on the floor, but he did say that he has plans on buying wall shelves so that he can place the PC on top of those. Another much needed upgrade is the GPU because we got bottlenecking for days. An 8700K paired with a GTX 1050 Ti. What in tarnation. Nonetheless, it's a very clean and minimalistic gaming setup with potential to grow. Thank you, Andre, for entering. Sticking with minimalistic setups, we have JM and a beautiful white and black Stormtrooper inspired gaming setup, which is also used for video editing for his YouTube channel and programming. He's rocking a 24 inch ASUS monitor, the Razer Black Widow X Mercury keyboard and the Lancehead Mercury gaming mouse. Excellent choices on the peripherals. For audio, he's got the Logitech Z213 speakers, which he painted them in white, and the Logitech G633 headphones. I'm not too sure why he went with a black headset when there are other great selection of white headsets like the Void, HS70s from Corsair, and the Turtle Beach Recon 200s. Although the black on white contrast is really nice, majority of the gear in the setup is white. Even the PC itself, it's a budget build inside the S340 Elite case with an R5 1600 and a GTX 1060. I'm loving the custom sleeve cables, the RGB fans, and the custom Stormtrooper SSD cover from V1 Tech. That's pretty much it on the desk, other than a painted gamepad from Logitech. Now underneath the desk we got the cables, which are managed very well for the most part using cable clips and zip ties, but I do recommend grabbing a cable raceway to make it a lot easier and less messy. This is definitely a clean and compact setup that just works. Thank you JM for entering. I should probably call this episode the super clean edition. <laughs> Wrapping up the episode is Sam from Texas and his setup for doing homework. I truly hope that's a typo and that you use this for more than just doing homework. Otherwise, why else would you have an Alienware with a 6800K, 16 gigs of RAM and a GTX 1080? Last time I checked, you can run Microsoft Word and 1080p over 100 FPS with any graphics card, even a crappy laptop. Anyways, back to the setup. So he's using the IKEA mom desk to support the 34 inch ultra wide gaming monitor and a few other things like the K70 keyboard, M65 Pro mouse and the Corsair MM800 RGB mouse pad. I would personally route the mouse pad wire towards the keyboard and tie them together using a zip tie or something so that there's only one cable going across the desk. It will look a lot cleaner. For audio, he's rocking the Audio Engine A5 Plus speakers and very similar to the first setup, Sam also has wall shelves mounted next to his setup. However, it's to hold different things. His alarm clock and Solo 3 wireless headphones. Really? Is it me or are those wall shelves kind of overkill for what they're holding? I think he originally mounted them to hold up the speakers, but then realized they would look better on the actual desk without cables running down from there. I mean, if cables are what you were worried about, then you could have easily hid them using these white wall raceways. The cables underneath the desk are managed well, thanks mostly to the rack, but the rest of the wires are grouped together with zip ties, nicely done. I do have to say that I approve the use of a rim to hold up a PC instead of leaving it on the carpet. Hey, if it works, it works. This is a really clean setup, but I feel like something's missing, specifically that massive gap between the acoustic foams. It's really hard to ignore. Maybe you can add a poster or a painting of your favorite game or maybe anime to fill that gap and give the setup some more life. Thank you, Sam, for entering. And that's it for this episode of Setup Wars. Make sure you guys vote in the comment section below on who has the best desk setup. And if you guys enjoyed the show, feel free to drop a like. And if you didn't enjoy, you know what to do. Thanks so much for watching. As always, I will see you in the next one.